everybody, it's Shelly Hoffman, and I'm here with uh, Dina Falcone. Dina is the town clerk for the town of Lysander. And, you know, we talked to Bob a lot, who's great, but um, but you really know the ins and outs of what's going on in the office. So um, I thought it would be nice to talk to you and, and give the community an idea of how things are really going over there in the town of Lysander. How are you today? Hi, Shelly. Thank you so much for having me on today. It's nice to, uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulty, which those of you that watch this know that's part of the course. <laughs> There's a little clicking, but what can you tell us what's been going on since you guys reopened? Well, so there's some changes. Um, well, first of all, I just want to start by saying that we just um, put hunting licenses for sale on August 10th. Okay. It used to be August 3rd. We got a whole new system. Um, so we're trying to get used to that. But August 10th, everything went on sale. So that includes hunting, fishing, uh, deer management permits, which um, give people different zones that they're allowed to, to hunt in. And bow hunting and muzzle loading also are some other options that everybody can get. Um, so those are all on sale right now. Our system is working. So come in and we'll gladly help you. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you, I just learned something. I didn't know there was zone hunting for deers, which I guess makes sense to keep keep the numbers, right? Something with numbers. Correct. And when people come in and they say, well, I would like 7F. For example, that is an area in Lysander that is a popular hunting area. So people get two choices. So they'll say, I want 7F twice because it's like a lottery. So we put in their information and it spins a little bit and then it comes up and says, okay, you get 7F. So you get a tag for 7F. If they get it twice, they get two tags for 7F. Why would they need two tags? Oh, um, two deers. Yeah, well, it's for, yes, yes. So it's a different zone. So it says, if you say the DEC comes in and says, you know, I want to see that you actually have a license to, for this zone, they can say, here's my 7F, 7F tag. And then they tag their deer. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've learned so much about hunting. I'm not a hunter, obviously. I just, I'm not. But I've learned so much through this whole process. And we have some great residents who come in and they tell me all of their deer stories. I love it. It's fantastic. Do you ever get any deer meat in return? Does anybody give you anything like that? I had to try venison chili. And, you know, it actually was pretty good. Um, <laughs> but, you know, thinking of it is just, uh, I don't know. I like beef chili better. <laughs> so, I'm um, with you. I try new things, but, you know, so. So what else is going on over in the town? All right. So um, since this whole COVID pandemic, um, some people purchased marriage licenses during the pandemic, and they were unable to get married during that time. So New York State is helping out with these people. If they if their marriage license expired, because it's good for 60 days, so if it expired, um, they're not having us charge them again for another license. And it's $40, so that's a good savings for people. Because everything was just so messed up with that, that people um, couldn't have their weddings, their receptions, they couldn't get people together, so they had this license that expired. What's the extension for? Like, what if it's next year? If it's next year, they'll still be able to do it because they'll see the date on the marriage license was during like the height of COVID. But if they have any particular questions from where they received their license from, they can call that town clerk's office or they can call New York State Department of Health. Okay. okay. Well, that's good to know. So what else do you guys do over there in the town? Um, I went over one day for a handicap sticker for one of my clients. I didn't know you did that. You do that. We do, we issue the handicap tags and part of that is uh, managed by New York State and the Sheriff's Department usually monitors. So um, we issue the red tag, which is a six month tag and that is considered temporary, meaning that they have to, the resident would have to come back and give us a script from their doctor to get one renewed every six months. A permanent tag, the doctor would mark permanent on the script and that means that it's good for five years. So a, a tag is good for five years. When they come back in five years, they don't need to bring another script from their doctor. So just from a real estate standpoint, if you move and you change states, are the handicap things good from state to state? Do you have to go to a new state doctor? No, um, actually what you have to do is you have to go to that county, that town that you live in. So if you move to the town of Clay, you have to get one there, town of Clay. So each, each um, municipality has their own that they issue. Some municipalities don't go for five years. Um, I know the village of Baldensville, I think their police department does it and theirs are for two years. 
So if you live in the village, you can either go to Village Town Hall or you can come to the town of Lysander and get yours. <laughs> so depending on who you want, you can get two years or five years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you just do five years, right? So, um, so that is another service that we provide. We also provide notary services. And um, I guess a lot of banks right now are not, are they're only taking appointments for notaries. So we don't require an appointment for notaries. You can just pop in and we'll notarize what it, what it is that you have. Um, but the thing is with the notaries, um, we do require that people do not sign it before they come in. And um, we have to make sure that the forms are filled out completely. Okay. I think is that a charge? Do you charge for that? We do not. It's a service. That's a service. Okay. Um, we also sell Easy Pass, so nice. that's a good little perk that we have here. Um, and also, part of what my responsibilities are as a town clerk is I'm the record management officer for the town, the records officer. So I have to keep everything. Basically, I have to keep everything. Um, so people come in here and they'll give us a contract. I keep that contract. I probably will keep that contract until something tells me to not. And the thing that tells me to not keep it is from the New York State Archives. They give me a book that I have to follow. It tells me what I can throw away, tells me what I can keep. Um, so if anybody around the building says, you know, I have this, what do I do with it? I simply look it up in that book and I keep it. And I have a, a big vault here. Um, and so next time you're in, I'd love to show you the vault. I'll show anybody the vault. I'm proud of the vault. <laughs> it's a big room with all these files from, you know, the, the 1700s, and it's just very cool yeah. and very historical. Um, and that's where all of our records and minute books and things like that are kept. When you say contracts, what type of contracts are you talking about? Anything. Um, it could be a lease agreement. It could be um, an aqua permit for, um, for a hydrant. Um, it it's, could be the permit for the use of the football fields at our town park, anything like that. Wow. Yeah. Um, you also, uh, so a lot of times dogs get, dogs get loose. And I know that sometimes uh, people wind up coming to you for that as well, correct? Yes. Um, so we do not have dog control in the town of Lysander, but we contract through the SPCA. And they are wonderful. We, they are so great. Um, what they usually do is they'll call, people will call the SPCA and say, I lost so-and-so, I lost my dog. We'll look up the address. Hopefully the dog is licensed. If the dog is licensed, it's an easy fix. If the dog isn't, then there's a little bit of a problem because they have to go and they take the dog, they bring it back. And it's a whole huge <laughs> rigmarole to get the dog out of the SPCA. <laughs> so I recommend everyone get their dog's license after four months old. They have to have their rabies. It's seven dollars and fifty cents if the dog has been spayed or neutered, and fifteen fifty if the dog is not spayed or neutered. And they can do that with you as well. Simple process, and they can renew their dog licenses online, which makes it even easier. Okay. Um, with COVID, have more things become available online, or do people still need to come in? Well, all that we did a record number of dog licenses online during COVID. Um, People still prefer to come in or mail. So what I did during COVID was I would come in and I would go through all the mail and still process the dog licenses and things. I didn't want people's checks to be sitting on my desk for however long we, we were closed for. So I came in and I worked. And I also worked from home, um, answered a lot of calls, a lot of questions about dogs. Um, you know, and if people couldn't get to the dog, get to the vet for some reason, I said, well, don't worry about it. We'll hold your, it's not, you know, nothing's going to happen to you. This is a weird time. This is a time that people are going through this huge change. It's difficult for everyone. So if you can't pay your dog license because of COVID, you can't get in. We're not going to penalize you for it. We send out first notices and second notices just as a courtesy. So we try to really be to work with people. Okay. Um, is, do you send out notices because of the rules? Because mm -hmm. you don't always know what to do. We do it as a courtesy, yeah. Um, renewals are once a year. So we send out one notice. And then if we don't hear from that dog owner within, um, I think it's about a month, then we send a second notice out saying, oh, oops, you forgot. Maybe get, you know, you need rabies or you need whatever. So, but, you know, I mean, if you can't pay or if you're having an issue, just call me because I, we can work something. can always work something out. Okay. Yes. So that, that's good to know. What about... Um the hunting license, that's streamlined online. Marriage licenses, is that something that can be done online or do they have to come in? No, people have to come in. We have to see the party that's getting married. 
So we have a certain requirement for that. So what we suggest everyone call us first so we can tell them what documents they need to bring with them. Okay. Um, we have a form that's on our website, townoflysander.org, um, application for marriage license. And so we require them to print that out and fill it out. It has all their little personal information and that kind of thing that they have to fill out. They'll bring that in with their original birth certificates with the raised seal and with their parents' names listed and a form of ID such as their driver's license. And if either party's been married before, we need to see a divorce decree signed by the judge. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's the protocol? What's the protocol to come in? You know, you can't just now open the door and walk up to you like I used to say hi, you know? <laughs> that's That's been really tough. Um, so people are to wear masks, obviously. And we have a table at the door and it's a little visitor's questionnaire. And this is for contact tracing in case something happens. So we ask a few questions. Have you had a fever? Have you had a cough? Have you um, come into contact with anybody who's had COVID? Um, have you been asked to quarantine? You know, that, the, that kind of thing. So they fill that out and then they bring it to our office and we take a look at it. And um, we've only had one person who had some troubles breathing, but she had um, underlying issues, which was not related to COVID. Um, so if I were to get sick or my deputy or somebody in the building, we can call these people and say, you've come into contact with somebody who's had COVID and we think you should go get checked. Get tested. Um, the thing is tested, correct. But the thing is for me is I miss having some residents used to come in my office and we'd have coffee or I'd go out and talk to them. And, you know, the, one of my fa favorite people came in the other day. He was actually a professor of mine at Lemoyne, and he comes in to get his um, hunting license. And I always have him come in for coffee and we chit chat and we're talking through the glass and we have a big piece of plastic up. And, it's you know, it's so sad. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is. And yeah. so those are the things that, that we have to deal with. And I, I you know, but I, I guess we have to. Right. But well, people have been really good about it. You know, people fill out the forms, they wear their masks. Everybody's been really wonderful. I think we've been really lucky. Yeah. Well, I know some of the towns, you know, maybe the the the, the layout of the office is different. You know, Bob said it kind of worked for you guys to do it. You already had the classes in place. You, ha you had those things. It's yeah. just uh, changes in the personality. You're a people person. You want to be with the people. That's kind of changed. Because I, I know the village is starting to get, like, the ring doorbell and... You know, just a different, but they don't have the same set of And I think the police have to walk through there. And, you know, so you're kind of lucky in the way that you're laid out, I think. I, we have a great layout. And we're lucky that we have windows. We really are. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, too, is that every year I choose an organization that I like to give to in the community. So um, I worked with the backpack program last year. Yeah. And I had set up in our lobby a huge table, and I we received just pounds and pounds of food. I loaded it on my trunk, brought it over to the library. Um, it's things like that that I'm a little skeptical of doing right now because we people come in with bags. People would come in with things, and I go out and greet them and talk and this and that. And it, now it's like it's not like we want to limit people in our building, but if we have all these people coming in and out, then your the exposure is greater. Yeah. Um, so I did the backpack program last year. Um, I did the SBCA one year. So I did that actually in my office. So I people come in my office and drop off all their items. And I had my trunk full and I brought it over to the SBCA. Uh, and that was so much fun too. Uh, and then I did the food bank one year mm -hmm. and I did helping house one year. So every year I like to choose something to do. So this year I'm trying to think of something that I can do sort of remotely or, you know, I, I, I don't. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of just thinking about what I'd like to do to help the community. That I think as a public servant, that's part of my job. Yeah. Well, and maybe somebody watching this can reach out or give you a call and say, what about this? This is a socially yes. safe distance way to do it. So if there's anybody watching that has an idea of um, what this year's project could be, it would be nice to get input. I welcome that. I would welcome that. That would be great if someone <laughs> would do that. I, I, I just feel like I it's a way that I can help out. And since I have so much exposure here in town hall, why not? Right. Yep. What would you say, um, other than the fact of greeting people, what's your favorite part about being the town clerk in Lysander? Um, I consider myself a little bit of a control freak. <laughs> and so I like to have control of the records. I like to have control of my office. I like to manage people. Um, I love working closely with the supervisor. Um, we have a great working relationship. We bounce ideas off of each other. 
Um, he's been absolutely wonderful. And I think that we make a really good team in that, in that regard. Um, I feel like I am here to provide a service to people and I just enjoy the whole aspect of it. And I feel like I can make a difference too, you know? Yeah. Well, I can say from a community standpoint that you can feel the difference of somebody who's enjoying what they're doing as a passion as opposed to somebody who's just waiting for five o'clock or four o'clock to come Correct. and get out the door. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Well, I uh, I want to apologize for listening for the clicking sound, but um, it's only when I'm talking. So hopefully you're enjoying the sound of uh, Dina's voice. But is there something else you want to mention? Something you think the town is doing currently, or is going to be doing soon? You want to get out to the community before we uh, part ways? Well, we have a few public hearings coming up um, on August 20th, and uh, one of them is for a stop sign, um, local law, that we're putting more stop signs in Giddings Crest. So the Giddings Crest neighborhood should be pleased that I think that's going to be a good thing. Um, but I would, I mean, people don't really want to come to meetings right now. And, you know, I totally understand that. But we have everything spaced out really well in our auditorium. So there is room for, you know, for more people. Um, so maybe as things progress, get a little better, come to a meeting, just see what, see what we're all about. Um, you know, we have, we have a great crew here in town hall. We, I mean, all of the offices here are wonderful. Everybody works really hard. Everyone is great. So um, I would suggest, even if you have a question, just call me. Our minutes are online. Um, the agenda's online. And if there's something that you want to see online or something you need from me, call me and I'll just, I'll get it right out to you. Yeah. I've had to call over a couple times for different things and I've always had it by the end of the work day. It's been oh, nice. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Even the lovely lady that I pay my taxes to, she's always pleasant. It's not oh, even painful to pay my taxes with a smile. <laughs> she is very pleasant. Yes, very pleasant. <laughs> well, perfect. I um I appreciate your patience this morning as we're kind of get going through this uh, technical stuff. And as always, I enjoy talking to you. Uh, one last chance is your last chance to throw it out there to the people in the community. Um, Go to the meetings, all the licenses, all those things that you do. Um, is there anything that you think you didn't cover? Because you guys do a lot at the town. I know, and there probably is because I, I mean, I have, I have a list here. I went through. Oh, I didn't talk about passports. <laughs> do I have a minute to talk about that? You do. Okay. All right. So we do. We are an acceptance agent for the federal passport agency. So um, we were not doing passports for a while. They, the federal government said you're not, you're not doing them. Uh, post offices will do them basically for emergency travel only. So we are starting to do them again. Um, okay. Just give us a call. We'll let us. We'll let you know what you need because there's all different issues when it comes to passports. The only thing that the federal government has told us is that they do not have a processing time. They said if somebody asks, when am I going to get this? We don't know. It could be months. It, it, I mean, usually it's four to six weeks. Could be right. longer than that because they're really backed up with passports right now. But we can take your picture. We accept the passport applications. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're really a one-stop shop. <laughs> <laughs> is the fees the same? I would assume as if I went, to, I went to the post office for mine, which now I know you guys do it, you know, probably a little bit easier to come to town hall. Are the fees and all that the same? Because I'm assuming they're regulated. The okay. fees are all the same. Yeah, <laughs> except the pictures. We charge, we only charge $10 for a picture. Okay. And I think we do a pretty good job at the pictures. So, I would <laughs> my son to looks like a thug. Get your pictures done here because we do a better job. <laughs> I told I told Jordan that I don't know if I'd let him in another country if I was looking at his picture because he just, you know, he looked mean like a, like a thug and, you know. <laughs> yes, you. It's it is. It's like a mugshot. Yeah. You, know, you can't smile. You can't wear glasses. You can't um, have like any kind of um, like print on your shirt like, to say something. Like everything has to be just plain and you have to look angry. Yeah. And when we take pictures of kids, we tell them, you know, if they're like eight, nine, 10 years old or whatever, and they, they want to smile, say, well, pretend you're in math class. And they go, and they just make <laughs> that's all I can think to say. And they make a straight face. <laughs> That's good because I was going to say my little one, she kept giggling. We could not get the picture of her. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, we've had that. We've, and we've taken pictures of babies. And we were working with a woman once. This poor baby would not sit still. And she was like running around. It was so funny. I mean, we were exhausted by the time she left, but we got the picture. 
Very nice. <laughs> so I want well, like you said, I appreciate your time. I always love talking to you. And I probably will come to the vault because I love history. Um, I don't like being the person in charge of keeping that, the responsibility of it. But um, but I certainly like uh, this, like when you said 1700s, I mean, that's one of the reasons I bought the house I bought it because it's almost 200 years old. And I just think the history, history is so cool. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Next time you're in the office, come on in and I'll give you a little tour. All right, perfect. So I will enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.